All right, so we're going to talk about power now and absolute versus relative measures. So sound is a form of wave motion, a pattern of pressure, a change in density that is propagated through an elastic medium. Energy is transferred through the medium, and the transfer of energy occurs at some particular rate, which is called the acoustic power. So the acoustic power is the rate at which sound energy is transferred through the medium, and power is defined as the rate at which work is accomplished, or the rate at which energy is transformed or transferred. So power equals work as a function of time, or energy transferred or transformed over time. Power refers to the amount of work accomplished by an engine per second. Again, the amount of energy that's transformed into heat energy. Now, power and energy are not the same thing. For example, with shoveling snow, a person might be able to shovel for an hour at a rate of two shovelfuls per minute before the amount of energy stored in their muscles is used up and exhaustion results. But if the person picks up the pace and does four shovelfuls per minute, exhaustion will occur earlier. Or if someone goes for a jog versus sprint, the person that's sprinting is going to come to exhaustion before the person that's jogging. So our ability to complete a task is limited not only by the energy or the capacity to do work, but by the rate at which our energy is expended or the power. The unit of measure for power is the watt. So if we expend energy at a rate of one joule per second, we've expended one watt of power. Talking about absolute versus relative measures. So when we say that a particular sound wave has an acoustic power of some unit of watts, we're talking about an absolute acoustic power. Now we're commonly dealing with very small magnitudes, which is why, again, we use our um, exponents and decibel notations. So even though the value of the acoustic power is very small, the absolute measure of acoustic power in watts refers to the rate at which energies can consumed or transformed. We often talk about a relative acoustic power rather than an absolute power. So to find a, a relative measure power over another absolute reference. So when we're finding a relative value, you compare two absolutes, but one of the absolutes happens to be a reference. So you can use the two absolutes in form, as a, form a ratio. For example, the acoustic power of wave A is 10 times greater than the acoustic power of wave B. We don't know the absolute power in watts of either A or B, but we know a relationship. So this is a relative measure where we know a relationship and we form this, this formula over here where we have an absolute over a reference and then you get a relative. So with a relative power, we're expressing the level of a power in a sound wave by forming a ratio of two absolute powers. The ratio of the absolute acoustic power of the sound wave is in question is compared to that of a reference. So you see where it says level? That's a relative measure, and we're comparing an absolute to an absolute. You always have to have a reference when you're talking about relative measures. So I use the example of the biggest loser. Let's say um, a, a contestant on the biggest loser lost 150 pounds. So you're thinking, oh my god, 150 pounds, that's so much weight. But what was the reference or what was the starting point? If the person started at 400 pounds and lost 150 pounds, that would make sense. If the person started at um, 150 pounds, you can't lose 150 pounds. So it's all relative. Have you heard that expression? Everything is relative. When you compare something to a reference, what's your reference? you get a relative value. You have to have a reference though. If you don't have a reference, there's no answer. 150 pounds, that could mean someone's deathly ill or someone on The Biggest Loser lost a lot of weight. That makes them healthier. 